of note is that the the old Prius head had pipes coming straight out. It had two pipes coming straight out and had this temperature sensor in the middle of those two pipes. Now you could change the whole head, but then you're dismantling an engine that is superior to the one you're replacing. So the last thing you want to do is lose a lot of your new stuff for your old stuff. Now we, we do need to keep some old stuff, but we're going to keep as much new stuff as possible. So we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this configuration. We're going to accommodate this hose here, this uh, radiator hose. Um, if you don't have this section here to connect up to your lower radiator hose, which is on your driver's side, if you don't have this section here, you can buy it. It's about 35 bucks. Uh, it's 15 for this, and I don't know, another 15 for this, and tax, whatever. But um, if you don't have that, you can use the short stubby hose. There's a stubby hose that comes off of the uh, the 2012. There's a stubby hose, and you can shoot it down this way, and then grab it with a six inch piece of, well, an eight inch. I, I would go with an eight inch pipe, a one inch galvanized pipe. You can get it at Home Depot. Um, if if you don't like that idea, you can just set it up like this. You can, this they call this a pipe. Toyota calls this a pipe, which I guess it is. And there's a little sensor here that we're not going to use. So leave the sensor in there because it it seals the hole. That's what it that's what it's there for now. Since we're not going to be able to plug that sensor in, there's no provision for that in the old Prius. Now. Um, the, uh, there is one little takeoff on the front of the old Prius engine, and that goes to the coolant tank. Uh, you could call it an overflow tank, but that's really not what it is. It's really just the coolant tank. And th this, this line here, lucky for us, it does actually go to the coolant tank. So even on the new Prius, the 2016 Prius, this hose will go to the coolant tank. So we're going to take our old coolant hose and we're going to plug it in to this location here and um, we're going to cut we're going to cut a line we're going to cut the line in order to accommodate another hose that goes to the um, the throttle body and, and one of these one of these hoses does go to the throttle body um, do not cross it with this one which is a vacuum switch if you put your your EGR your uh, your if you put your coolant line onto your vacuum line, your engine's not going to run very long. If it runs at all, you will just dump water into your into your uh, into your intake. It'll just be horrible. So don't do whatever you do. Do not cross up the vacuum lines with the coolant lines. Okay, they look the same. But uh, it's very important not to do that. So first of all, this line's going to go to the tank. We're going to take this line off, and we're going to use the one that's in the car now. And then we'll put a T in there, and that'll do that. Now the other lines back here, you get the the EGR cooler. Now um, I diagrammed all this out because I wanted to make sure I got it right. There's there's no way that you want to mess this thing up, but uh, the way the old system works is that this this line here goes to the goes to the heater core, I believe. It goes to the heater core, and then from the heater core goes to the catalytic converter. Uh, there's a heat exchanger on the catalytic converter. Uh, it's just for a thermal efficiency. You just want to keep as much heat as possible. So. Uh, it goes through the catalytic converter, uh, the heat exchanger, and then comes back to the the EGR cooler, and then goes from there out to the thermostat. Now there's a line. Uh, I'm not sure where it is on this one, but there's a line that goes to the thermostat. Normally they'll leave the thermostat when you when you buy these engines from LQK. They're not always, so don't don't uh, don't quote me on that. But this this is the thermostat here, the thermostat housing. The thermostat is is part of the housing. So, and, and this is the water pump. In case you were not aware, so 
this line goes to the thermostat and it feeds through here feeds through here and uh, that's your that's your PCV so you don't you don't want to hook up your you don't want to mix up your PCV with your thermostat line but uh, the thermostat line we still need to find that oh here it is right here I'm looking right at it so this 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 is a hard line that comes across here and comes to like in the new Prius it, go, it probably goes right to the uh, right to the um, heater core and of course that that also goes to the uh, the catalytic converter in, in that loop there and so um, anyway I've got this all mapped out I'll probably show you a picture of my diagram just so you can see it but um, anyway I would love to use the old EGR or the new EGR cooler but they canted the pipe they canted it just a tiny bit and they ran a line through the EGR for the throttle body which is kind of weird it comes from back here it's kind of weird and also where it hooks up to the exhaust manifold they also canted it back here they probably did that so you couldn't get them mixed up but uh, there's no way to hook them up without probably doing some welding or something we'll, we'll probably get into that later because I would really love to do it but uh, not today and then here's your fuel line the new fuel line new fuel rail is is marginally different from the old one and uh, when you do the swap just leave the old fuel line leave the fuel rail hooked up leave all your leave all your uh, your injectors leave them all don't touch them don't remove them don't disturb them at all uh, hopefully the car ran fine before before it got wrecked and uh, hopefully it'll run fine again so leave leave the leave the fuel rail and the injectors alone okay and leave that fuel line now I'll show you how to take this off at a later date as well